Here I wanted to test my motorized Edelkron Slider Plus with a Canon C200. The goodness of a sliding motion can be qualitatively evaluated by looking at the movie. Here I wanted to show you a way to quantify the goodness of a sliding motion. It turns out that the maximum error committed by the slider is lower than 3 pixels and that this error can be reduced by increasing the sliding speed. This is measured by analyzing the x-pixel coordinates of a tracked point at 8, 6 and 4 meters from the camera. Of course the results might change if different sliders are used, even with the same type of slider. It looks like there is an issue with the slider speed which seems to oscillate. I will discuss this in the last part of the video. The following videos are on the setup I'm using. The Edelkron Slider Plus Medium has 49cm travel when mounted on a tripod and about 25cm when sitting on a flat surface. The load capacity is about 14 kilos. I have a standard Manfrotto base plate mounted on the camera. The Edelkron Action Module can be attached to the slider and allows for motorized slides. You can set the slide speed, initial and final position and acceleration. The Edelkron Target Module allows capturing curved and parallax shots with the slider. On the target module I also mount a Manfrotto quick release plate. You can find this for a few euros on eBay. I'm recording in RAW 4K ISO 800. The lens I'm using is set to 35mm and f8. I've placed three targets at 8, 6 and 4 meters from the camera. The setup with the action module is very easy. You just need to record the movement by moving the slider from the start to the end points. You can then adjust speed and acceleration. The first test was done with the speed equal to 10, the second test with the speed equal to 50, and the third test with the speed equal to 100. I also wanted to check how the target module performs. For the parallax motion you need to set the distance from the subject to be tracked. I also tested the camera mounted on a Manfrotto 055 tripod and apparently the slider does not seem to bend when reaching the extreme points. In the next videos I will show a way to quantify how good the sliding motion is. For this we need four programs, DaVinci Resolve, After Effects, Microsoft Excel and MATLAB. We import the composition into DaVinci Resolve, we open the color panel, we apply a 3D LUT, we add another node and, and add some saturation, then we add another node where we increase the contrast so that these points become more visible and can be tracked in After Effects. Then we go to the Deliver panel and select TNX HR444 12-bit and export in 4K. We start the render and once this is done we import the composition into After Effects. In After Effects we import the previously exported file with we'll right click and uh, select track motion and then we start from the point that is at 8 meters from the camera and then we track I've tracked these three points at 8 meters, 6 meters and 4 meters and uh, renamed the tracks 8 meters, 6 meters and 4 meters I've repeated the same steps for the other movies. What we do now is that we go into the track, inside track point, we select feature center and we control C to copy the X and Y coordinates. Then we open Excel and we control V to paste the coordinates. So this is the time coordinate or the frame and these are the X pixel coordinates and the Y pixel coordinates. I've created uh, three sheets, one for each movie. The one at 10 speed, 50 speed and 100 speed. Now we close this file and then we're going to import this data from MATLAB. All this processing can be done in either Excel or MATLAB or Python, any other software. Now we are in MATLAB and we need to import the data from Excel. 
This is how we read the data from Excel from the first sheet. We read the data from the tracker of the point at 8 meters, 6 meters and 4 meters. And then we repeat the same thing for the other two movies. So let's see how the data looks like. T is the frame, so the time. X is the X coordinate and Y is the Y coordinate. This is the X coordinate of the tracked point versus frame. Here we are moving from left to right and then from right to left, from left to right and then from right to left. Let's see how the Y coordinate looks like. These oscillations are probably due to the fact that uh, the camera and therefore the slider were not properly leveled. We don't focus on Y, we just focus on X. The first thing we do is that we want to get rid of the noise. We smooth the track with this function called the smooth with a window of 20 frames. We also calculate the velocity, which is given by simply calculating the differential. The first point of this vector would be x2 minus x1, and then the second point would be x3 minus x2, and so on. And because the sampling step is one frame, the velocity is simply given by the differential. Now we can plot the velocity. And so basically we get zero where nothing moves. The next thing we do is that we shift the x-coordinate to zero. After shifting the x-coordinate we get this. Now if we plot again the velocity, we are looking for the regions where basically nothing is moving. And the regions where nothing is moving are these ones close to zero. If we zoom in, we can say that nothing is moving when the velocity is between 0 0.012. So we use this information to calculate the error committed by the tracker. We calculate the error given by the tracking procedure as the difference between the smoothed track at the points where the velocity is zero and the original coordinates at the points where the velocity is zero. And this error is given by 0 0.07 pixels, which is good. It's sub-pixel error. Now, let's plot again. We need some markers. We need to know where the slider is not moving. We read these values in a vector called range. And then we're going to write a function. This function called x deviation takes uh, as an input the frame, the smoothed uh, x coordinate, a starting point, an end point that is taken from this vector. We call the function from here. We put a breakpoint. Now we are inside the function, let's plot. What we want to do now is to analyze this motion and see how regular it is. The ideal slider motion would result in a perfect line. And we can see that uh, it's not perfectly straight. So we want to evaluate the deviation from the ideal behavior. Because when you start the slider, you can have some acceleration and also when you reach the end, you're gonna have some slowing down. You're gonna take 80% of the maximum value here and 20% of the maximum value here. And analyze the curve just in this region. To do that, we look for values that are larger than 20% of the maximum value and smaller than 80% of the maximum value. So we get the indices of the vector because this thing is selecting all the curve here. We just need to focus here. So we restrict the index to the region between F end and F start, so between here and there. This is the index, and this is our restricted line. We can plot this. 
So we just want to analyze this portion of the curve. Next thing we want to do is to fit this portion of the curve with the line. We use polyfit. One is the order of the polynomial, so a line. We get a fitting line by using polyval, so P contains the coefficients. The red line is the fitting line and the blue line is the original data. As you can see, there are oscillations here. So if we want to see what's the error committed with respect to the correct behavior of a slider, we need to subtract this line from this line. So we need to do the blue line minus the red line. And we get these oscillations. Uh, this means that we don't have a perfectly regular uh, movement in the slider so there is a maximum error of 3 pixels and a minimum error of minus 3 pixels. This is for a low speed. I believe that when you increase the speed the situation should be slightly different, it should improve a little bit. So we had some decorations in the graph. We can plot this again. And so we have this. By line 1, we mean that the first portion of the line that we selected. And this is just the ideal behavior. So if the slider was moving correctly, this blue line would be overlapping with the zero line. So it would be a straight line. This function is ready. We're going to apply this function to all the curves and all the movies and all the points. Now we get out of the function and we go back to the main script. We're gonna substitute this with the for loop where we get all the lines. We're gonna analyze the four lines, so one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna make a for loop that loops the four lines and then saves the data inside this struct line. And we get line four, Line 3, line 2, and line 1. So basically when it's going from left to right, we get this. When it's going from right to left, we get this. So it looks like when it's going from right to left, we have a lower error. So just one pixel, 1.5 here. And, our, and this behavior is kind of repeatable. Now we take this portion of the script and we just substitute it with the, another script that we call analysis. We have analysis here and then we assign the analysis to the right portion of the struct that is hosting the data. We repeat the same thing for the point that 6 meters and 4 meters we can plot we can execute this for the point at 6 meters line 4 line 3 line 2 and line 1 so we have more or less the same behavior so we repeat exactly the same thing for the other movie. So we're going to plot all the curves together and see what we get. Um, this is just a basic plot using the data that we just extracted. This is the result. So we have the deviation from the ideal behavior for the x-coordinate. Uh, in blue we have the data extracted from the first movie so this is from left to right, from right to left, left to right and right to left. In red we have the data from the second movie and because the speed was 50 instead of 10 then of course everything happens faster. You can expand this and uh, Basically what we see is that there is less error if you go faster 
and then the yellow curve is for speed equal to 100 and uh, basically if you zoom in you're gonna see uh, the straight line is for the point at M8 this one is for the point at uh, 6 meters and this one is for the point at 4 meters so what we can do now is to plot the minimum value and the maximum value to have a summary of this behavior I've restricted the axis so we can see here uh, that for the first line from left to right um, if you increase the speed so this is 10 uh, this is 50 and this is 100 if you increase the speed you're gonna get uh, more ideal behavior now I don't know why we're getting these issues maybe the camera is too heavy or maybe the, 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 the chain is not good enough maybe you can perceive this if your subject is too close to the camera and uh, it's also interesting to see that uh, it behaves in a better way when it goes from right to left than left to right I don't know why this is happening it must be something related to the motors I don't know and the other thing you can do of course is to stabilize this uh, this movie. So this was just to see how accurate is the slider when a heavy camera is mounted on it. To summarize, I did some tests with the C200 mounted on an Edelkron motorized slider. You can use the code I discussed here to quantify the goodness of your slider movement. With my setup, it looks like there are some oscillations in the slider speed, meaning that the slider does not move at a constant speed. This could be visible with the relatively close subjects. I will check with Edelkron if this is uh, within their specifications or if there are issues with my setup. If you have suggestions, please let me know below and thanks for watching.